SmackDown was a pretty crazy show tonight, especially the way it started. You had it start right outside of the Performance Center, and there's apparently a hit and run involving Elias. The police and ambulance arrive on the scene, and Elias is on the ground, and we see a car that's basically smashed into a tree with Elias falling on the ground. We see Renee Young uh, noted the witness saw a car crash injure Elias. The witness also saw a person in black pants and a black shirt run off. So um, it was probably Seamus. Um, and then the vehicle smash car was on the side of the parking lot on the curb. The cops checked on the vehicle and found it belongs to Jeff Hardy. Kayla Braxton is Emma Braun Strowman. Strowman is a witness to the crash. He says uh, someone ran out and uh, it is probably, again, Seamus, I assume, is behind this. The police uh, come in, and they see Jeff Hardy passed out near the scene, uh, like a block away. They take him, they have to hold him. You have two police officers. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, uh-oh, police guy, officers are going to arrest Jeff Hardy. This is just like, you know, ah, no. You know, the riots all over the country. It was just in Minneapolis where the incident happened. Now it's all over the whole fucking country. But, um... As America's on fire, we kind of wanted a, uh, a bit of a, a break from reality. Instead, we have to get the, the whole cop thing. It wasn't too bad here. They take Jeff Hardy away. And this was a well-done segment. It came off well. Um, it plays on Jeff Hardy's real-life issues. I'm some, some people might be offended if it's a DUI accident. There have been wrestlers. I mean, the Usos, they've been trouble. Jeff Hardy, of course. Uh, numerous guys. I assume maybe they should, should they really be doing an angle like this. But... You know, it's something new. It's different. It's cool. They've done this with Jeff Hardy before. I would say, you know, 12 years ago, back uh, when Hardy um, uh, was, uh, you know, getting that first title run and stuff. They, they did something where he was passed out. So they've done stuff like this, but I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Some people might feel find it uncomfortable, but I thought it was well done. Back from break, they have Adam Pierce. He addresses the whole roster. He's bigger than the whole roster. It's all I can think of. He notes Elias is injured and Jeff Hardy is going to jail. Sheamus says he's not surprised. And it's like right when they said Elias is injured, he showed Corbin smiling. There's a whole bunch of wrestlers there. Daniel Bryan's in the center of it. He tells him to relax. AJ said he was happy and he says he gets, he takes on Bryan in the finals. Uh, Bryan says maybe they should pick someone to take on. And they keep going back and forth. Everyone argued until they wanted the chance. King Corbin said Sheamus should face Ryan and the winner takes on Styles. Dolph Ziggler was furious and pointed out he's not Jack Tunney. <laughs> uh, the Jack Tunney thing is well. Whatever happened to old Jack Tunney? Is he even alive still? I want to know look this up, Jack Tunney. Uh, hold on. Oh, I think he did. He passed away. Oh, no. Oh, that's sad. Um, but the Adam Pierce announces the Battle Royal and the winner takes on Daniel Bryan. The winner of that match uh, then takes on Styles two weeks in the finals. So Daniel Bryan's in the semifinals and we'll see if he beats this guy. So the winner is the new Intercontinental Champion. The way it's going on is Sheamus. Sheamus is going to get the spell. Uh, it's going to be Sheamus and Jeff Hardy maybe at SummerSlam. That's what I, when they're doing this thing. I'm thinking of Sheamus and Jeff at SummerSlam for the Intercontinental title. But I feel like if we're going to do an angle like this, maybe they should have it for the world title. They can even do that. They, if they can really build this thing up well, Sheamus and Jeff Hardy. I never really thought in 2020, oh, we're going to have a great few with Sheamus and Jeff, but we are. Uh, so you have the finals. You have Grand Mata League. King Corbin, Drew Gulak, Jey Uso, Lunce Dorado, no Jimmy Uso, uh, Cesaro, Shorty G, Sheamus, Dolph Ziggler, and Shins- Shinsuke Nakamura. Fun battle royal, okay match. Uh, comes down to Sheamus and Jey Uso. Sheamus eliminates Jey Uso, and he takes on Daniel Bryan next week, which he'll probably beat. It won't be 18 seconds again, but he'll probably beat Daniel Bryan next week. And I assume his next opponent uh, is going to be... Um, AJ, I think he's going to beat AJ. I think Sheamus is going to win the belt and Jeff will come back and I'll probably get the belt from Sheamus. That's how it's going to go. This show of Son of Hell, she promises to beat Lacey Evans in the back and Lacey comes and pushes her from behind. Short AJ argues with Nakamura and Cesaro on the back and uh, they set up a match with him and, and Cesaro. No one cares. Sonny Deville against Lacey Evans. Solid uh, match. This was okay. It was fine. Um, they were going to have, uh, they're basically wrestling. And then finally what happens is Sonia, uh, she hits Lacey with a rock hand and uh, a hard right hand and Evans fights back. And, uh, Deville is, um, basically, uh, walks out. She says she, she, she said she'd face Lacey Evans on her own terms. She walks off. So it's basically a count out win for, uh, Sonia Deville. 
And then they do a stupid Forgotten Sons good in that. No one cares. Speaking of the Forgotten Sons, remember that one chick who used to manage Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy? Blake's in the uh, Forgotten Sons. Alexa Bliss. She comes out and Alexa looks great tonight. She looks smoking hot. I uh, have to say, she always says, but she looked damn good. Uh, she comes out with Nikki Cross. They're walking in the back. New Day surprised them under doing a moment of bliss with the New Day. This was fun. This was an okay segment. So they each give them each other presents. Nikki gives the New Day pancakes she made, and the New Day doesn't want to eat them. They throw them on the floor, basically. It was funny. And then they make Alexa Bliss a coffee, and Alexa won't drink it. Um, it's, the, it's disgusting. Biggie pulls stuff out of his trousers. It's all sweaty and... Ugh, anyway, um, Alexa doesn't want to drink it, and she gives it to Nikki. Uh, they then they ask them about their possible challengers, and New Day ask them about the iconics and uh, their other challengers. And then they're interrupted by Bailey. We see Bailey's Nick and Sasha Banks, and Sasha's basically wearing a tracksuit, and she looked great too. Her and Alexa always they, they look. I think they're in really good shape both of them. But Sasha, ever since she came back, her body is just smoking. She looks way hotter than she did before, and she looked good there. Now she's smoking. Um, so she comes in, she throws her bottle, her her, uh, her uh, jacket right at Alexa Bliss, and um, Alexa's mad. Nikki holds her back. Bliss points out there's uh, they, they go back and forth here, and Bailey and Sasha rip into Alexa and Nikki. Alexa says there's five champions here and asks about Sasha not having a belt, and uh, Sasha gets angry. Sasha notes they put the women's tag team titles on the back and they promise to win them back. Bailey then says Banks is going to prove that they're the best team on the road, and Sasha's angry. She's like she's probably not afraid of wrestling with Alexa Bliss, but she's in heels and she's in a track. She's like wait what? And Sasha has to wrestle Alexa, and she's basically in her heels and have Alexa before the match uh, give her a draw because they get revenge for throwing her sweater at her. So Alexa gets some revenge on Sasha where the match starts, and Sasha is forced to wrestle in like white uh, running shoes. It's funny, but. This was pretty good. They had well. They worked well together. Alex and Sasha always have good chemistry. They've had a, a big feud. I mean, there's a whole thing where they hate each other. I don't think they hate each other anymore. I think that's probably gone now. They're older now than what they were in NXT. They were both like kids, so maybe that was just you know, young girls fighting, but they're like in their uh, mid to late 20s now. Um, you know, they, they have good chemistry, but here's a problem. You can't have a good match when you have Nikki Cross and Bailey being so obnoxious on commentaries doesn't want like when I, Nikki is just terrible. I hate Nikki now. I used to not mind her, I thought she was okay. I liked her in Sandy, I liked her as a psychopath. She is the worst now. Nikki Cross sucks. I hate her. And Bailey's annoying as hell too. Bailey's just uh, she's just not good. Her on the segment was awful. You know, I remember thinking um, how much uh, Alexa and Sasha look like the stars of their team. They look like stars, and they're like Bailey and Nikki look like losers. Is Nikki more than Bailey. Both of them look like losers. Uh, that's how I was thinking when I was seeing that segment. But uh, Bailey's just I hate this heel gimmick. I, I don't care if she goes back to being. Uh, the baby, you know, face Bailey. I can't stand it. Anyway, the match they have. Uh, Sasha actually paid tribute to a Hana Kimura wearing a Hana Kimura armband. So they're going okay on first. It was fine. Uh, Sasha has an early advantage. She dominates Alexa for a while. She kicks her ass. Uh, she beats her up in the corner. She hits like the double knee stop so much. It was crazy. Uh, she hit a meter or uh, and Alexa starts to face, face fight back. And there's two, there's this funny spot anyway. Um, Alexa and Sasha, I'm going to be an asshole for pointing this everything kind of creepy, but Sasha always does stuff to Alexa when they wrestle. I mean, that's weird. Like, she ends up, I don't know, maybe it's just people on Twitter gifting it or uh, taking screenshots, but it's strange. <laughs> Sasha in this match, she puts, she, she pins Alexa after she hits a meter order and she goes face first. She puts her crotch right on Alexa's mouth. It's like after... <laughs> It's like a must be porn scene when the dominant chick like sits on the girl's face after she dominated her. It's like it was so bad. I don't know what Sasha was thinking. Maybe it was, you know what? No, no, it was it was the pants. Was, like she was wearing her regular gear when it looked bad, but the pants went right into Alexa's. Like it was covering Alexa's mouth. And um, yeah, the, I'm not complaining actually. But hey, um, it was okay. Uh, the, Alexa makes a comeback. She tries to fight back, but she's uh, tired because she took a beating before. Eventually, Alexa hits her not Sasha with a big right hand. She drops Sasha Banks. She's going to go for the Twisted Bliss. Bailey comes in, and then uh, what happens is Nikki Cross jumps on the apron, and what happens is as she jumped in the apron, Bailey pushed Cross into a Bliss, and she knocked her off the apron. Alexa's off the apron. Sasha then, she hits a springboard into the ring, and she pits Alexa Bliss in the sunset position, and 
again, like she puts her face into Alexa's crotch this time. It was pretty obvious. Like, wow. Like, every single time these two wrestle. There's even a screenshot. Like one time she pinned Alexa. She like grabbed her ass. Grabbed both her butt, butt cheeks. It's not one well, but I don't know. It's a strange. Uh, but yeah, she uh, gets the win in, on Alexa. Uh, maybe she's paying her back for what happened earlier. Wow, this is so bad. You're probably turning this off right now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but she pins her and uh, Banks gets the win over Bliss. She celebrates. Nikki hates to Alexa. Bailey leaves with Sasha. So continues to shoot up Bailey and Sasha. And I think Alexa and Nikki would be better off just split them. Nikki's just killing Alexa now. I think Alexa needs, she needs to rejuvenate her career a bit, but I think uh, being away from Nick, Nikki, I think, I don't even know, you can put the belts on the Iconics. No, those belts mean nothing, so. Troy G beats Cesaro, don't care. Who cares? Um, I was more looking forward to what's going to happen with Mandy and Otis after this. Um, this was okay. Um, so then you go, earlier today, Otis and Mandy Rose, uh, they had uh, in their briefcase hung out by the pool and they had champagne and Rose, uh, Mandy Rose is sleeping. Otis jumps in the pool and uh, Mandy Rose has a dream. This is now they go into Mandy's dream. This is fine. They, they, like we're in the middle of a pandemic. We have the country on fire. Be as silly as you want, whatever. So in the dream, Otis gets out of the pool and walks towards Mandy. He rips off his shirt and they kiss. Otis was, Rose was having a hot and steamy dream until Otis did a cannonball in the pool. This was a parody of the famous uh, pool scene at Fast Times at Richmond High. And Otis then had an intense uh, make a scene in the pool. Um, I thought this was just really good. I thought this was, th- these are the fun, this is a funny couple. And Otis must have someone in the back who supports him because they're learning to make out with Alexa. Then Kurt Angle backstage, um, he says he's, uh, he, he talked about his past. He's here to talk about the future. So I guess Kurt is here to, um, he's probably got a new contract. Uh, new face of NXT, new, um, uh, officiating his last match in NXT. It's Matt Riddle. They do a Matt Riddle video package. Matt Riddle's on SmackDown. So we have a new star. Uh, Matt Riddle, can, I think, can do really well there. But he has to change his attitude. I want to see him face uh, face Goldberg. I think that would be hilarious. So they go backstage. Caleb Braxton says they're excited about his uh, debut. Matt Sheamus interrupts. Says uh, they make a big deal of Jeff Hardy now. Matt Riddle. He promised to beat Dana Bryan. And him and Bryan go face-to-face in our Main event of the evening. Sheamus against Daniel Bryan. Did Daniel Bryan win, which is a surprise. So the main event, it's okay for a while. Uh they have a back and forth match. It's not they've had that these two, you know, they've had they have a long history together. I've heard they're actually really good friends. I don't think people knew that. I was surprised, but they're actually really good friends. Um Sheamus and Bryan. So the, the first time they wrestled each other was in nine and in, um, in 2011, 2012. They were supposed to have a match at WrestleMania 27. Then the match got scrapped at a pre-show and turned into this, this giant battle royal. So no one won. They have a match at WrestleMania 28. And Sheamus wins in 18 seconds. He wins a world title from Dana Bryan. That's after Dana Bryan kisses AJ Lee on the apron. Sheamus hits the brogue. Very memorable. Everyone knows that. And, of course, that helped Dan O'Brien a lot more than it helped Sheamus. And then they were scheduled to wrestle at WrestleMania 30. Yes, the show Dan O'Brien was going to win the title. And the show he did at the end. But that was originally, he was originally going to face Sheamus. It was going to be Randy Orton and Batiste in the main event. 31, I think, it was going to be Sheamus and Bryan again. I'm pretty sure. So, Vince wants... I'm surprised Vincent just saved this for WrestleMania. Anyway, they've had so much matches together. Sheamus hits a white noise, he hits a, gets a clear fall, a near fall, sets up a road kick. Jeff Hardy, however, walked down to ringside. Sheamus yells at Hardy, and then Daniel Bryan hit the running knee for the win. After the match, Hardy jumped Sheamus, but Sheamus ran off. Michael Cole and Corey Graves said the last time they saw Hardy, he was getting arrested. So I, I don't like what they did here with Hardy then. So I think this is something they should have just done. I mean, why? What are they doing? Have Sheamus win this match. And I'm more of a Daniel Bryan fan than a Sheamus fan, but I don't have Sheamus win here. Or sorry, have um have him win and have him beat AJ. And then Jeff Hardy gets the belt from Sheamus. I mean, that's such an easy story to tell. I'm not sure why they didn't do that. But, I mean, they already gave it away that Sheamus was the one. They could have just done this mystery attacker angle and let this go on for a few weeks. Why? There's no fans anyway. There's no pandemic. You can tell the story as best as you want. Um, hmm. I'm a little angry with that. I don't know. I don't like what they did there. So, that was smack. It was a fine show. It was okay. You had the Jeff Hardy angle. You had um, the Sasha Alexa porn match. And I'm joking. Uh, you had uh, Mandy and uh, Otis actually have a porn segment together. Uh and of course, they blew us the probably one of the better angles they've had in a while, which was this uh, Seamus stuff. 
they, they did a good angle. They should have saved us. They should have had Jeff Hardy and Sheamus uh, feud that, um, like, they should have played this storyline out more. 